it was a couple weeks before the pandemic and I we had recently really tragically lost our two French bulldog girls really young it really made us realize that maybe life needs to be more so I think about quality we had never ever considered rescue before that and certainly not special needs rescue but uh, one day I was kind of on Instagram scrolling and I came across a post by French Bulldog Village and it was Maggie's little face and I just stopped scrolling and I just was overcome with this feeling like oh my gosh like I think this is my girl. I messaged them immediately and they said sorry applications are closed and I messaged them back and I told them a little bit about kind of our story and where I was coming from and why Maggie really I felt had to be mine and they opened apps up for five minutes and let me squeeze one in and the rest is history. We live in kind of the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. Maggie was being fostered in rural North Carolina. When we were chosen to adopt her my husband and I hopped on two flights and then a four hour drive together. So we got Maggie and I knew, I mean, I was in love with her from day one, but she came with a lot of issues. Maggie's a lilac and so she's a rare color, French bulldog. Unfortunately, when you start breeding for color over necessarily health, you start to get these weird recessive gene on gene mutations. And Maggie got one, unfortunately, that caused her to have a genetic condition called microphthalmia. Maggie does not have any eye spheres or eyeballs. At that time, the breeder recognized that Maggie was different and he made the right thing to do and surrendered her into rescue rather than euthanizing her. When we got Maggie, she was in such a state of stress and possibly neurological issues. She could not stop spinning clockwise. She would spin for up to 48 hours at a time. The only thing that got her to stop was fainting from exhaustion oh, or wow. stopping to vomit. The rescue paid for Maggie to go see a neurologist and an ophthalmologist. So that was great and gave us a lot of things to think about and some answers. Basically, the ophthalmologist believed that she kind of developmentally had some damage to some cranial nerves and that might be some of the reason for the spinning. And then the neurologist said, sure, we can run an MRI, we can do all the tests, thousands of dollars. Whatever I find, he said, I can't fix. Both my husband and I are neuroscientists, so let's try some medication for, she was diagnosed with OCD, you know, obsessive behavioral stereotypies. I'm like, okay. So we tried something called Clomicom. And then for the first month and a half, I kid you not, every day I wore Maggie in a baby Bjorn, which is a carrier for a human child. And I took her to work. I saw patients. Everyone was so amazing and helped me just really form that bond with her. And it took a month and a half and the spinning slowed. And now it almost has completely stopped unless she's in a new scary environment. She's gone from that to now just like really living her best life. But I'm always honest with people like you foster. It takes time to decompress. Maggie took a month and a half to really get her get her bearings because the only parent she'd ever known was her foster mom who intended to adopt her. And then things came up in her own life. So her foster mom raised her, picked her up from the breeder who surrendered her at eight weeks old, raised her for nine months of her life. And then I got her. And so Maggie got put into a new family and she was moved from a farm in rural North Carolina to urban city downtown in our city of Calgary, you know, and a big weather change as well. But as I started to see her come out of her bubble, I knew, I knew. I'm like, she's, she's staying. She's my girl. She is like an unbelievably amazing special dog. She is very, very brave. She's up for anything. Her favorite thing to do, believe it or not, with some adaptions is to play fetch. We live beside a park and we play fetch for an hour every single day and I've put a bell in her ball and we throw it like the length of a football field and she runs and she runs and moves her head. We call her Stevie Wonder and she can catch the ball. When we first got her, she was so scared to walk. It took four months for her to walk. She's learned she fully trusts me and that I'm her eyes and she responds to different volumes and different tones and inflections of my voice when I say the command easy. So it can be anything from a slight slow and turn to a full heart and complete stop. It's it's incredible. So I let her now be wild and free because she knows she's her commands are yeah perfect. Our bond is just is so strong. She's great with my husband too, but I'm definitely like the primary and I like it. I like that. 
feel so comfortable and grounded in nature. So like I said, even now, like it took a four months to walk in a city on a sidewalk pavement and traffic scares her still. Immediately when I plopped her in the ocean, which I hear is really rare for a Frenchie, she loves to swim. I do put a life jacket on her because we go out in the ocean for like an hour. So she follows my voice. So we swim. She loves to paddle board anything in the water. She loves to hike and be in the forest. So I would say she's definitely a nature girl and she's very comfortable in, in nature. Her foster mom and I have become really good friends, so that's another side effect of rescue that I love to tell people is you gain this family. I'm always so proud to let people know that as of May, I became an official volunteer for her rescue. So as of May, I started helping out at French Bulldog Village with their fundraising efforts and social media. So I always like to plug FBB because they've been incredible.